Parent Security version 4.7. Well, it's officially not officially out, just kind of way I look at this. So I did a review a few months ago of the Parrot Linux distribution. If you're not familiar with Parrot Linux, it is a security focused Linux distro based on Debian. And it's also set up to be a rolling distribution, which is really nice. The nice thing about any rolling distribution is you don't really have to wait for the point release and do some type of major upgrade to it. It just kind of happens. And right now it's at 4.7. So they do give it names. They do give it point releases for announcement reasons, uh, but they're always adding features and setting what the default should be because at some point they do have to uh, close these updates and then release an ISO. So the ISO isn't out for Parrot Linux 4.7, but even though it's not out and you can still download Parrot 4.6 when you go here to about, because I've just been running all the updates, uh, I'm at Parrot Linux 4.7, which also means I have the new kernel that comes with it, which is currently 5.2. This is really nice because you get all the bleeding edge features all the time, but it's actually stable. I haven't really had any issues. I said haven't really had, and that does imply some issues. The one thing I've run into a couple times because they moved to the latest version of Mate, which I have both Mate and KDE installed in here. That way, whatever mood I'm in, I can switch between them. Um, I've talked about that. And the other one, you can literally just install both desktops. No matter which one you download, you can easily install both desktops and switch between them at the login screen. Um, in Mate, occasionally, the network does not update. What I mean by that is a little in the corner um, and I can't produce it on demand, but occasionally when I'm swapping bef uh, between networks, it will sometimes pause and not let me click the little network icon at the top. Everything works in the command line. It's still online. It's not a functional thing. It's just a visual thing of not knowing whether you're connected to the Wi-Fi, the VPN or the hard line. Minor problem. And I know I just got a bunch of updates this morning. And so I was going to test it some more and see if it still happens. But when you update a desktop, that does occasionally occur. But it didn't hurt the functionality of it at all. And considering how, so to speak, cutting edge all this is, I don't really look at that as any type of major issue. Uh, it doesn't have any problems at all. And I've been going back and forth and I probably use KDE more than I use the Mate desktop now um, on my laptop here. And if you didn't notice, because this always comes up, this is the four core, well, two core hyper-threaded 4X Intel Core i5-5300U, low powered 2.3 gigahertz running on my Lenovo, which I always want to call it an IBM, but it's a Lenovo ThinkPad because the ThinkPad series came from IBM X250. This is not a spectacular laptop by any means. Matter of fact, you can find it pretty cheap on eBay. Um, and I'm for my daily driver, for what I use at home. Obviously, I'm not doing any video editing or high-end gaming on this, uh, but I don't really game and video editing is done on my new Threadripper, not Threadripper, 3900X Ryzen machine. Back to the Parrot GNU here. So I haven't had any problems with it. It's been working really well. Um, I kind of like the wobbly windows again, which is why I went back over to the uh, KD desktop. I I know it's stupid, but they make me happy. Um, but what did I use this for? I guess would be one of those questions people ask a lot. Why would you run Parrot on here versus uh, Pop OS on your desktop? So I found that Parrot on my laptop is handy because I spend a lot of time going to clients. And one of the tools that is just really well put together in Parrot is Net Discover. And this is a lot of times when I get to a client and I got to start sorting things out, especially when you're talking about new clients, new client onboarding, you know, really quickly, I can go here and go, all right, let's just find some stuff. Yes, that quickly we started enumerating my network and I'm on the network where a lot of our stuff is, the private network. And uh, you can see the switches I found on there. Uh, you can find the Chelsea AO communications. And if you follow any of my free NAS videos, you'll also realize that the Chelsea AO communications is the free NAS with the 10 gig card. It just identifies everything really quickly. So from there, I can start doing things like, all right, I know the IP address. It's at 3.8 for that particular device. We'll cancel this. And we'll just run something like uh, ZenMap because I wanted a UI and I can start doing more scans. So let's uh, dig a little deeper. And I know you can load all these tools on other distributions, but they've built it all in, which just makes it really, really nice. So let's just do a quick scan and let's see what it figures out about my free NAS. Oh, look, there's the ports that are open um, and things that are available. And you can see really quickly, you can pivot and start doing things a lot faster. Uh, the VPN support is still, you know, really nice in here. So if I need to jump to, 
I'm in my office, but I still have my uh, Quickly Connect here. I did the video on the Anon Surf. It's with this latest version, which works great, uh, the Anon Surf. But being able to switch between VPNs, the Anon Surf, uh, if I need to go outside and look in, Anon Surf can be pretty cool for that when you have to be somewhere but want to look at the firewall from an external view. That's another reason I like having the VPN in there. Uh, the VPN actually puts it so I map through my own network. And what that means is when I'm at a client, but I need to look at their firewall because I'm configuring it, I can see how that firewall looks from my network and be able to scan. Pair just makes all this really smooth for me. Already having all my other tools uh, like proxy chains and things like that that I've used regularly built in, not to mention all the information gathering, things like that. So still running it. It's still one of my favorite uh, distributions to have on my laptop because just having everything at your fingertips is really, really handy. Also, running the latest kernel means things like this. And I did a review of this device, the Alpha Networks. Uh, this is the exact model, and I'll leave a link to the review. It's AWS1900. I believe it's the right model number. Yeah, AWS1900. I'll leave a link to the review I did on this. Uh, but if you're not familiar with this nice, powerful Wi-Fi for doing testing, it's handy because I don't have to, and other distributions, maybe you'll have to load a driver on this because it's running the latest kernel. It seems to pop right up, no problems. And like I said, back to the advantage of running Parrot with all the latest bells and whistles. So I still think it's a great distribution. I just want to do a follow-up on there because I get a lot of questions, what distro are you running? And I'll just refer back to this video uh, until I change. But I don't do distro hopping much, so I've been really happy with Parrot. The development team has been really good. Uh, feel free to join their forums to keep the discussion. They're still looking for suggestions of, you know, what are the defaults going to be for 4.7 and everything else. And I'm also going to be doing some testing. I just got to get around to it to trying this on a Raspberry Pi. They have been working on a Raspberry Pi implementation of this um, with the Pi 4 being affordable and uh, powerful at the same time. I'm really hoping to get some testing done uh, with this. I know Kali works fine, as I've read on the Pi 4, uh, but I you know, I'm kind of used to the parent environment, so I want to see how good that works in there. So that'll be some future testing I do. Uh, but let me know your thoughts below in comments, questions, a concern. But overall, like I said, I'm, uh, Parrot is still a great distribution to run. Uh, watch my more in-depth review where I talk about a lot of the tools that are on there. Uh, but it is wonderful to go out to clients and be able to quickly start enumerating a network because that is sometimes the first thing I need to do when we do onboarding. And uh, having all these utilities built right in makes it a lot easier easier to do. And if you need to get more in depth, it does come with OpenVAS set up on here, which will allow you to do like whole application testing and things like that. I'm gonna get to a later video on that. It's just a complex um, piece of software. So for those of you wondering why I haven't done a video on it, that's really why. It's a matter of getting around to doing those more complicated videos. They take a little bit more time to put together. All right, uh, leave your comments below. And uh, if there's something real specific besides OpenVAST that you want to learn about from uh, Parrot OS, let me know. Leave your thoughts below. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.